This week on Dr. Drew After Dark, it, it's sort of a perfect circumstance for therapy to see what is it, what are you really feeling during the day that's keeping you stuck. Everyone and their mom is has diver, been... diverticulitis is cat? What? <laughs> it's sus. <laughs> what? No, I would never say something that insane. What are you talking about? That's a medical condition. What the fuck? Wow, look, I, we, we, but dude, we don't know where you draw your lines, <laughs> so... Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Everyone, hey mommies, keep your jeans high and tight, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's Dr. After Dark, 818-253-1693 and drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And do support people to support us so we can keep doing this damn thing. We appreciate it very much. Uh, we try to select our supporters very carefully and... Uh, you know, I, I some of the things that I, I pretty much use pretty much everything we talk about here uh, that, uh, you know, things like Babel and IV, liquid IV. Oh. Drew, what are we doing here, man? Unprofessional. So unprofessional. You said you were ready. Booth boys in the house. Booth boys here. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, hey guys. Up, Thank you for doing it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. Let me make sure my I don't set I haven't set any other alarms for myself before we get going here. That's your alarm sound? That for, the, for that time of day, yeah, for some weird reason. Huh. What's what's the alarm for? Uh to call my wife, which I already did. So oh. perfect. Thank you. Thank you for asking that, Chad. Good thinking. You need a reminder oh. for that? Yeah. Uh it was to make sure I didn't get doing other stuff, you know, like eating or strip clubs. Or uh, strip clubs mm. or uh, by oh, the way, yeah. uh, last time I saw you guys, it, it, this is we're sort of out of sequence here. But mm. uh, Cat mm. Temp, Susan Pinsky, and I went to a strip club. That's right. It's well, odd that we said nothing about it, and you guys somehow magically ended up at a strip club again. It's almost like it wasn't our idea the first time. Ever. Uh, it it was, certainly wasn't your idea this time. This was Cat and Susan. <laughs> well, uh, clearly, it wasn't mm. our idea this time. We didn't go. I, no, I know. And, and Susan, Cat said something about going to a titty bar, and Susan went, "I'll take you there." And so that's thus. Off they went, and uh, it was odd. It was uh, like what? Three? Just like the first time? No, it was more odd. It was for a different club. <laughs> more odd. We went to the other club. Uh -huh. we went to the, what was it? The Bellagio or some shit? Yeah, some name like that. It's a little yeah. more like Roman, you know, pillars and and you know, Corinthian columns and stuff. Did the strippers come up and say thank you to at this time too? Yes, <laughs> and there was a little more. Uh, I want a picture stuff, which was kind of so cool, challenging, and wow. then. The owner went, put that up on our website. I'm like, no, don't do not put that up on the website. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't like. And so that was a little weird. And people got weird about me not taking pictures or, uh, or throwing money on the stage. No, there was it was midday crowd. So it was you first went of all midday. First of all, we ate. We had lunch. Homie saw. Did the, you eat there? Homie yeah. saw the C team. You God ate. Damn. You <laughs> ate <laughs> at the strip club. It was, well, that's why we went. That's what? why we went to this strip club because they they people reported that the food was decent, which it was. It was okay. Which people? Who'd I have, you talk I have to? heard strip club food is pretty fucking fire. Mm -hmm. It's low key fire. Gross. Yeah. So it was okay. Uh, I had a big salad or something. It was good. Big and salad. Yeah, I did. And and then there were Dream the usual, you know, people wanted to come up and chat and talk and 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 the, and the usual conversation is it's always it's always um I'm not going to be doing this much longer or I'm just doing this just because or I shouldn't really be here. Uh, and you're, and you're showing, showing, shaking your head knowingly. Oh, I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah. yeah That's the story. Yeah, yeah, Yet they, yeah, yeah. they tend totally to stay for quite going. some time, right? I mean, the money's good, so they stay. Do they ask you medical questions there? Sometimes. Uh, the, the last time I'd been to a strip club before with you guys was... Right, when you dragged us, yeah. Was my, yeah, when we dragged you, uh, was my bachelor party. Uh, and then lots of conversations about HPV and cervical cancer, and it was uncomfortable. Well, hold on. Uh, Chad asked you a question. You said yes, that people were asking you about problems mm -hmm. they had. and you. Yeah, but I don't remember this. they just like push to the side and be like, what is this? No, no, no. It, 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 back then, it was really explicit. Like, I just had a LEAP procedure and because there was a lot of HPV around. It's a cerv cervical cancer surgeries. A lot of that mm. stuff. Uh, and mm. well, am I going to be okay? And blah, blah, blah. They just wanted to talk about it. At this club, I don't remember. I think it was more talk about, you know, what I'm going to do next. Not, not so much medical. Did not you so use medical. the uh, secret hand signal? 
uh, that that Annie had. He never taught it to me. It was something. It was something like this. There, some, there, some, you, there, you just got it. You're doing it. Look that's at it. That. That's Someone it. Else. It's like it's <laughs> like a natural. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't wave it around in a circle. <laughs> Uh, I don't think no Susan got some bills I don't think she really used them very much she actually ha- sort of handed them to some of the girls because there was there were, yeah she <laughs> handed them a stack yeah, to she, them because they, they were themselves. nice and they talked <laughs> to her she felt after. she felt guilty and just sort of give, she, she, <laughs> actually yeah wait I'm getting a memory didn't she, wasn't she picking up ones off the floor and putting them nicely on the fucking stage last time or yes was she was helping out that was her <laughs> no, Drew, Drew refused to get into anywhere that the light hit right, right. I didn't want to be in the light right. of the other one and and this this one was uh, it was nice some people were nice I mean it it's always and it's weird to me again. How um, this one wasn't as homey; it was a little more bar esque. But there were clearly n- regulars. You know what I mean? Like this is where people, these dudes, were coming for lunch. And mm. uh, well, yeah, you went midday. Yeah, so. it was, it was probably yeah. definitely coming for lunch. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, there was uh, there was a whole back Fuck room yes. thing. And Susan was sort of amazed by that, and, and I said, "No, you did That was going on at the other one too. I don't know how you missed that. I remember the, there's a whole back area where they were doing private dances and mm. things. I don't know. It's a, it's an odd world to me. I, I just I don't. Did Susan or Cat or you get uh, to no, the back room? No. What no. about the champagne room? No. Does it, what's that? It's behind the back room. Oh. Is that right? How do you know about that? Tell me about this. They sing this. about it in songs. Ah, does that that place that we went? Well, now the place that we I went with you guys seemed to have like a back area. There was not a back room. But does that place also have a champagne room? I think they all do. Yeah, I'm sure it could be there if you want it. Yep. Just money. Yeah. It, wherever, as long as you can pay for it. Yep. But no, a, no sex in the champagne room though. That happened. That's what they say in the songs too. Ah. Uh, so why that. why did they have a champagne room then? For champagne. For champagne, but also I think the other stuff. <laughs> the other stuff. handies and whatnot. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, sex yeah. but handies. Again, you guys know a little too much about these. We things. had a random guy take us to the strip club not super long ago. I found it very awkward. Any, you were there. Why are you, why are you acting like you don't know? What? Yeah, I remember we were out uh, at the bars and some random guy came with us. Holy! And then, wow, I forgot about that. what yeah, happened. That's right. I mean, it wasn't. It's not even a super. You know. Uh, Nothing really happened, but well, it's he, just I was so drunk I forgot. Drew, I'm yeah, starting to think damn. you're right, man. It's and he just goes to so many strip clubs, he just yeah, kind of forgets, forgets about. It. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's home for him. Done. I'm telling you, <laughs> guy knows how to operate there. He's yeah. very comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so, what happened, Chad? Tell me what happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you want to tell him how quick I left? <laughs> he did disappear pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I felt to the champagne room. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he went to the back. Uh, the guy bought me like a, a dance from like two strippers at once, and it was one of the most awkward things I've been through. I'm like, what do I do with my hands? Like, I don't really want to be doing this right now. You sit on them. You're not allowed to do well, anything. Well, it, it seems like I was, I was also surprised to see how much sort of touching there is. I always thought that was forbidden. Yeah, one of them grabbed my hand and put it on her breast. Yeah. And I was just, it was just so awkward. Is it that was, a Texas thing, or is that just the way stripping has evolved now? Or? I don't know. Any? <laughs> 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 Can you answer that, sir? I don't fucking know, yeah. man. I don't go to any strip. I have no clue, man. Yeah, I fucking hate strip clubs, dude. They're so dumb. I, I don't understand the point. It's like yeah, it is a little bit. Uh, I, I understand the point, but it gets a little. It's frustrating. I would think it's too transactional. I, for me, uh, I think yeah. yeah, it's 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 awkward. Yeah, I man. hate it. Yeah. Drew, when are we going next? I... I have no desire to go. Let's put it that way. But let me let me get some emails here. <laughs> Uh, recently I noticed that my peener has a lot of dry skin, is peeling. I definitely put lotion on it, keep it clean. I have eczema, but never gotten it down there. Do I just have eczema, penis, or now do I need to look into this more? Yeah, you, you know, you can get eczema there. You get anything there. It's skin. So anything, it's just actually, it's thinner skin. So anything you can get anywhere else, you can get down there. Uh, and the peeling stuff is sometimes just irritation from the activity, whatever you were doing with the penis. Uh, and so, and then it desquamates after the inflammation settles down. Whenever I get drunk or high, I think about what I think about what I'm not doing and need to be doing in my life. Stop procrastinating, get back to the gym, clean your fucking room. But when I'm sober, I procrastinate. Sit around, watch YouTube, play video games. I do have a job that pays enough and a little extra. Why, when I get fucked up, do I finally find the motivation to actually do something with my life 
And when I wake up, that's not really what I want to do. It's not on my to-do list. That's an interesting question. You guys have any thoughts about that? Yeah, he should probably drink and get high more, right? There you go, being the Dr. Dov. Uh, but but I, I feel like... There's all right. This is going to sound kind of weird. I don't know you. I I'm just just giving my sort of feeling from hearing the story. It it sounds like there's a lot of unhappiness here, and I think you need to get at that a little bit. Uh, it, it's sort of a perfect circumstance for therapy to see what is what are you really feeling during the day that's keeping you stuck. You know, one one of the things about hey, go see our friends at Better Help. Even I mean, that's the kind of thing that they are really very good at is this sort of kind of cognitive behavioral therapies where you just kind of examine what is going on here and why do you have this distinct need or desire to do something more yet in your sort of settled state when the, all your defenses are up you can't get on with it what is it you're afraid of what is it you're getting gratified by you got to dismantle you have to sort of dis, you have to kind of work through all that or or kind of break it all apart and look at it very carefully and then piece by piece, push aside the things that are working for you and the, take things that are working, push aside things that are not working and move on. I'm going to go to some calls here as well. Uh, here's Naomi. These people are on hold a long time. I want to get right to him, them. Naomi, go ahead there. Hi, Dr. Mommy. Hey, Mommy. What's happening? We love our female callers here. They are always so nice and ask great questions. What's going on? Well, I am 27, and I have an IUD baby. Mm -hmm. Um, And for the past, okay, so I have a friend with benefits, and he was a little bit nervous to cream pie me. It was right before my first cycle, and then about 12 days later, he then did it again. So my question is, like, what's my risk for pregnancy? I'm, in that scenario. Well, I'm a little confused. You have an IUD in place? Yes. Why does he think the IUD is going to malfunction? That essentially makes takes your pregnancy risk down to close to zero. You know, I don't know. He's a little bit silly. So he's just super worried about pregnancy to the point that he doesn't even trust birth control, right? Yeah. I mean, show them the data, maybe? I mean, just look it up online. What is the risk of pregnancy with an IUD? What, which IUD do you, do you have? I have a Mirena. Yeah, and so it's a progesterone-impregnated uh, IUD. It's extremely effective. Uh, I think you can kind of – I mean, if if you get pregnant with that device in place, um, God wanted that baby to happen. <laughs> that, that, that baby <laughs> needed to happen. Uh, so I, I think that uh, he should calm himself down and – enjoy himself and and by the way it's something you would like him to do so why would not he cooperate i don't understand um nervous men interesting uh thanks naomi uh tiffany what's going on there hey dr mommy hey tiffany um i just recently started therapy um probably should have started a long time ago (laughs) but um after my first couple of sessions, my therapist says that she wants to try um, something called brain spotting. Mm. Um, she said it's like a laid back version of EMDR. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I've never heard of it. So I wanted to get your opinion about it. If you know anything about it. If there, there are lots of, it. there are lots of things like this out there. Do you, do you have a trauma history? Is that what's happening? Yes. What was the trauma? If you don't mind. Um, I had a super emotionally abusive mother. Um, mm. Well, still do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I had a very traumatic um, pregnancy, um, delivery, and postpartum um, with my first child. Mm. Um, and just with everything that I told her, she she felt like that was the way to go. With yeah, what, it, whatever she uh, brain so, spotting. So, so well, let me let me look up exactly what she means by. Well, let's look up brain spotting on your on your, our screen here. Let's see what she's specifically talking about. I, I think she's talking about these motor these motor uh, repetitive motor movements. Uh, <laughs> just click on that brain therapy fastest growing area in the psychology health become proven immediately. Uh, <laughs> As as I remember, it is just sort of I I'm sorry guys, we're kind of digging through this. 
I have not referred somebody for brain spotting myself, so I can't tell you per se what my experience would be with it. Uh, can you guys read that? Nadav, can you read that? Uh, brain spotting makes you uh, makes use of this natural phenomenon through its use of relevant eye positions. Yeah, this helps the BSP therapist locate. Focus, process, and release a wide range of... Yeah, so it, it's really the uh, same. It's very, very similar to yeah. EMDR. It's the same idea. It's, it's more focused EMDR. And the idea is that the way trauma works is it's sort of locked off from your brain. Uh, it literally unwires from the rest of your integrated conscious self. The problem is it's there and it needs attention. And it will affect your feeling states, it will affect your behaviors in ways that sometimes you don't understand. And unless you get wired back into that part of your brain, you can't regulate it. You can't sort of get at it. And most people that have trauma sort of don't feel, they don't consciously feel anything about that. And then they put it away like, oh, I dealt with that trauma. It's something I had, but I don't think about it anymore. Well, not thinking about it anymore and not having any conscious feelings about it does not mean it's not still having its way with you and in your body. It's very much stored in the body. And these, these very kind of specific eye movement techniques help you get at those regions that your brain doesn't want you to go to. And the goal is to do it in tolerable ways so you can get slowly engaged with that region and start to regulate it along with the rest of what's going on with you. Does that make sense? Yes. yes I'm, I'm a very big fan of these therapies. Uh, and I suspect that what they would go at first was the actual sort of the, the more recent trauma that you have some unresolved stuff with. It's very good for phobias and you know sort of specific traumas like a car accident, that kind of thing. But it can also be very good for the chronic stuff and the, the childhood abuse and all these other things that are so, so, so common. The, it, it's not the solution in the sense that now you're done after that, but it's a way of accelerating this process and then you can stay with the therapy and continue to kind of build and grow in the therapeutic process without getting stuck. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right, good good luck. Are you you ready to do it? You're all on board with it? Yes, I am. I'm I'm very excited. I've wanted to get into therapy for years. Yeah. But just with busy lives and kids. It's, it's you, been hard, you'll, but now you, I, you will know you will know you're in the right zone when you feel sort of like earthquakey, like there's earthquakes going on and you don't know what's going on. Some patients will <laughs> will accuse the therapist of having broken them. You broke me. Something's breaking. Well, something is breaking. This, da this dam is sort of breaking loose, but they'll make sure you can do it in tolerable ways. Okay? Okay. Perfect. Right, Thank you so much, right. Dr. You betcha. Very good. I, I like the term Dr. Mommy, guys. Is that sort of sticking now? Uh, you like I think that? people call you from time to time that. Dr. Mommy, I think I think that's you like the, it? Yeah, I wrote it down. Ooh, we're like going to do the great rebrand. Forget Dr. Drew, you are now Dr. Mommy. Yeah, Dr. Mommy after dark. Yeah, I dig <laughs> it. <laughs> hydration is essential. Liquid IV, number one powder hydration brand in America. I pay attention to hydration. I learned my lesson out in the desert. Their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. Actually, I'm not. I use it every day. So does my wife. One stick... You can hydrate two times faster than water alone. Water doesn't hydrate by itself. You need something in the water, a solute. Plus, you'll get essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes as the leading sports drinks. Liquid IV comes in 12 great flavors. Keep that hydration routine exciting and tasty. One stick of Liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you, as I said, two times faster and more efficiently than water. Water alone does not do it. Five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, vitamin C, Liquid IV is also a non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use that code Dr. Drew at checkout. It's D-R-D-R-E-W. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code Dr. Drew at liquidiv.com. Laura, what's going on? Hi, Drew. Hey. Um, um, so I was cooling because... So I used to drink a lot of alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, in my early 20s and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I started to slow down because it's not sustainable. <laughs> uh, and, and now, anytime I drink, I tend to have four drinks and just black out. Like, can't remember the night. Um, so I'm wondering if it's like, I don't know what it is. I was wondering if it's like brain damage or if I'm just like completely talked. 
Yeah. It's, are you talked? Is that what you said? Well, well done, Laura. Yeah. Um, so um, Thanks, this, Laura. this is not uncommon. Uh, so I imagine you have alcoholism in your family. Yeah, my aunt. Yeah. Kind of an alcoholic, but yeah. like denies it. To right. Say, yeah. And so you seem to have inherited this potential and you have sort of what we would call a not a healthy relationship with alcohol. And when things do progress with alcoholics, they will start having blackouts and they will start having blackouts with lower and lower consumptions of alcohol. Now, that's typically when people are drinking continuously, right? Not like you're, you're binging periodically. But because the entire sort of process progresses, in other words, it's like your thermostat gets set to a certain level. And when you go back to alcohol, your disease will make you drink to a certain point without stopping. You just won't be able to stop until you get to this certain point. And in your case now, that certain point includes blackout. Now, why people start to black out with lesser and lesser amounts of alcohol across time is not really that well understood. Is it the fact that the some of the stomach enzymes aren't metabolizing the alcohol or the liver's not metabolizing it or is it some brain effect? We, it's probably a combination of all those things, really. The fact that you're having it with intermittent drinking is interesting. We don't normally see it that way. But my suspicion is... It is that, you know, the, the way the disease of addiction and alcoholism works is that you get progressive set points and your disease always takes you to those, those levels of satisfaction that it's looking for and it just goes there. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you can either continue as you are, which will end up with consequences. Like when in one of these blackouts, you'll do something you don't like. Uh, not because yeah. you, yeah, because you just will be drunk. And it's, you know, it progresses. This thing continues to progress. And what really progresses more than the stuff that we're talking about and blacking out and the amount of consumed, what really progresses is the consequences. And you can either A, stop, stop now or at least bring it way down uh, or get into recovery and uh, get some help with this uh, or when you're ready, do so. Thanks, Laura. So let's, uh, let's, we haven't done any voice messages recently. Let's do a little voicemail stuff. What do you got for me? Yeah, you want some voicemail? I do want huh? some voicemail. Well, uh. I got this voicemail for you. All right. Hey, Doc Shine, this is Mason. Um, I don't have any questions about my health, but I was just wondering, like, genetic diseases have to start somewhere. So how likely is it that you catch a genetic disease non-genetically? And are there certain ones that you're more likely to catch than others? Are there other ones that are impossible to get other than from genetics? And if, the, if that's the case, why is that? Thank you. Uh, bye, Hitler. I, did you understand his question? I don't understand yeah. his question. You're going to catch a so genetic disorder? So no, you're not. So there's, Yeah, there's genetic diseases. Yes. And so, I mean, I do kind of see what he's saying. And, What's he saying? Well, is there a way to catch genetic diseases that aren't genetic? Because, I mean, how do they start? They start through mutations, and mutations happen either spontaneously, because mm -hmm. we're always mutating a little bit, and if it, occur, it occurs in the right place, sometimes it can be passed along, and sometimes it can create an abnormal biology down the road. I mean, in a sense, cancer is a genetic disease. These are sort of disorders of DNA repair, essentially. Uh, and, you know, it, it happens through, you know, radiation exposure, like I said, just evolution. These things occur and then they get passed on. Um, you don't catch them. <laughs> they, they evolve. But then you can spontaneously mutate and yes. get a genetic disease. Yes. All right, so I think that's, that's yes. kind of what he's asking. Yes, uh, and, and they, the more interesting question would be, I mean, you know, heritable, there, there's heritable disorders and then there's like genetic diseases like Tay-Sachs. The genetic diseases that, that oh, that's just, for Jews, right? Yeah. Hmm. Genetic diseases like that that turn on at a certain point are actually kind of uncommon because usually you know you get an, a DNA damage and that kills the organism and certainly isn't able to pass it on. But these sort of genetic disorders that turn on, I always wonder if those are viruses. And it was, so in a sense, you can catch them because viruses can stick themselves into the DNA and sort of create differences in how the code is read and that might create a you know and if that virus is able to turn on at certain point then it makes sense that you might be able to catch it but it's um very rare very very but, rare. Drew, i'm kind of confused about like cancer if it's genetic 
But you can also get it from something. It, for it's example, not, smoking. Is it, it like turning on a genetic disease? Or it, you, it's it's a- adding. What it is is the smoking is adding to the numbers of DNA abnormalities, the DNA injuries, and the the DNA repair mechanism isn't either 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 isn't able to keep up, or you already have a deficiency in it. So it's sort of you've you've stacked the cards against it. Does that make? Am I making sense? So the, when you when you re, when you replicate cells, it's an extremely complicated process where the DNA has to re- replicate itself. It's prone to errors a lot. And so we have a whole system in every cell in our body to repair those mistakes, to, to read the genes and to make sure the mistakes are sort of replaced with the proper DNA codes. And certain genes like I have, I have something called Lynch syndrome, is a sort of a deficiency in that. It's like an, it's an inefficient repair system. So I'm prone to tumors, and this has been passed on through through families, uh, I'm prone to tumors in rapidly replicating parts of my body, such as the colon. So colon cancer is a little higher with Lynch syndrome. So if I don't have uh, like cancer in my family, I can go ahead and keep smoking. Didn't right? say that. Didn't say that. I so said it sounds like sort of. I said, I said you, you when you create lots of DNA damage, you're eventually gonna. It's eventually gonna get through. The DNA repair system mm-hmm. can only keep up so much. But if you also have a deficiency in that system, then you're really going to, you know, you're playing with, with trouble then. I see. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question for you. Yes. Charles. Um, I remember a while ago you were going about the difference between. I was going. Going on. You were carrying on. Yes. <laughs> perfect. This is perfect. Okay. Um, so you were saying something about uh, uh, when the correct uh, used to say whenever or when. Or people interchanging when and whenever. Yes. What like what was that actual difference? That when when the word when should be used and is sufficient to describe when something happened, people have left the word when off the table and just stick in whenever. Mm. So whenever I was having dinner, not when I was having dinner, whenever I was having dinner, mm. and it drives me crazy when I hear it. What if it was like like if. Uh, if I were to see police, like, would it be like, when I see, when I see, you could police? say, when, because it, whenever it suggests a repetitive thing, you know, whenever I'm exposed to police, whenever that happens, it happens a lot. So, whenever it happens, not just you could, when would also suffice when that happens, but whenever suggests it's something that happens repetitively. Right, so, but, you, but you're irked when, when, when they say, when I had be. dinner, when it was, should have been when I had dinner last night. It's whenever I had dinner. When is more sp- specific. When is is sufficient. But if but you but you said that when would be sufficient where for the when police. I see police. Yes, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be sufficient. But whenever right. gives more sense that it's a repetitive, broader experience. But when doesn't exist anymore. People are just stuck in whenever all the time. I completely agree with you. Hold on one second. Uh oh. Whenever they whenever you see the police behaving weirdly, like in like, other countries especially, like for you sure see that repetitive association. Well, do you see that repetitively? That's right. Whenever that happens, I think when could have sufficed. When would have sufficed? You're absolutely sufficed, correct. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. I, I, well, pay attention to when I use the word whenever and inter- interrupt me right then, and let's see if I'm using it wrongly <laughs> yeah, or not. Whenever you use whenever, it's always questionable. <laughs> yeah, because whenever to me means repetitive. Whenever I use it, whenever because I do it, I use when, whenever. You guys I, are, I agree with Drew here. Thank you. Talk to the professor. My j- yeah. Am, Am, am I am I in any way off base? Or let's get Zolo back in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever Zolo's in there, Chad, am I am I, in, off, am I wrong in my sort of assessment here at all? No, you're one hundred percent correct. Thank you. Are you hearing whenever all the time? Also, yeah, people use that incorrectly all the time. And you have the same stance as Drew on the word whenever. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it, it, it's when you know when you notice it when you start to pay attention to it, it will drive you crazy. I mean, whenever it happens, I'm ready for it. All right. That's proper use. Uh, Emily, Emily, Emily. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey there. How are you today? We're good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, My question for you, I have this pain in my lower right um, abdomen, Mm -hmm. and it's gotten worse over the past four years. Hmm. I believe it was. 
originally maybe a pulled muscle during the workout class where I overdid it. And now if I engage my core at all, I have this dull pain for like days after and sometimes spotting. So whatever this is, it's not muscular, right? You're assuming it's an abdominal wall problem. But the fact that there's spotting associated with it tells you it is something with this with your gynecological system. And obviously the right lower quadrant, there can be appendix down there. And sometimes that can actually get, it can kind of flop over onto the ovaries and tubes and cause some discomfort and problems there. You can get infections in the tubes. You can get ovarian tumors and cysts. You can get endometriosis. There's lots of things that go on down there, all of which are associated with spotting. You need to see a gynecologist as soon as possible. Why haven't you? Well, I brought it up with my gynecologist at my last annual. Oh, good. She thought maybe get my IUD rubbing somewhere when I'm engaging my core mm. and just sort of brushed it off. My sister has endometriosis um, mm. surgically diagnosed. So I've, you know, they're aware of that and I'm fine as of now. Um, well, the the that fact that back, the but. fact that it's sort of is it also when you get active generally, not just when you engage your core, but if you're like running or doing other activities, it also gets worse. Uh, not as much, but I can notice it. It's yeah, just not as bad. So, so it's anything. It's sounding like anything that increases the blood flow to that area, like exercise, and again, all those things can be associated with discomfort. I would go back, and, and I think. You know, your your doctors, you know, that we have this funny if we don't see anything when you're when you're there and you make the complaint and we're like, oh, I don't really see anything, we assume, and this is an important thing for everyone to know, we assume that if it keeps going, you will come back. You will come back and tell us that no, I don't think is it was nothing because it continues. So, and I think you need an ultrasound and I think you need to get another pelvic exam to see what's going on there for sure. And don't let them blow you off, which is another thing. We tend not to listen sometimes. And don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Let's see. I'm 32, never been a bedwetter. Uh, but lately, every time I drink and fall asleep, I make yellow. Luckily, I'm single and no friends, so the shame is mine alone. But why is this happening? How do it make it stop? It's uh, very similar, believe it or not. The, this is very similar to the blackout call that we had a few minutes ago that people, when they progress with their alcohol consumption, will often start bedwetting uh, and or getting up and walking across the room and peeing on the couch or something. Those are two very common things that come along when you're drinking too much. So it suggests that we got a problem here with the alcohol. Uh, hey, Chomo. So I'll re I'm curious what this is. Uh, big pot enthusiast from northern England. After a bonk hit, I exhale through my nose. Will I get more high versus the same hit exhaled through my mouth. I mean, uh, you know, obviously there's absorptive area in the nose and that's what you're trying to get at. But look, the surface area of the lung is so massive. I mean, the, what you don't appreciate is that, you know, each little microscopic alveoli is a surface area and there's millions of them. It's a huge area and it's exposed directly to the bloodstream. And so, and that blood goes once through the heart and right to the brain. So don't try to, don't worry about getting slightly enhanced uh, cannabis from the, from the nasal passages. Uh, your thinking is right, but ta-ta uh, there are words, as you say. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Susan has adopted that ta-ta um, greeting or-, or what? What, she was at the end of every streaming show. She started saying that. I said, "We well, just uh, stop with the R word part of it. Just say ta ta, okay? That's enough." Wait, she's saying tar ta? No, ta ta R word. Oh, okay. She was saying the R word, and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if everyone's going to sign off on that. So just just get on. Well, the, she wasn't saying R word. She, she was saying, was saying R word. <laughs> <laughs> it was she was saying that on the, hard on the R. show. I think she was. I remember a couple times my hair on the back of my neck went up. So. Uh, uh, ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> it's it's cap, man. Which part? It's, ca it's sus. It's sus. Which is it, cap or sus? I can't remember which. By the way, I don't know. It's just not. I saw you talking to Christina about being a bitch during her period. Uh, that was cap. Uh, oh, that it's her being a bitch. No, she's not a bitch during her period. She was very well kept, put together. 
like a like an adult woman should be. She she was great. Yeah. What but do you mean? You accused her of wanting it to be an excuse to be a bitch. No 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 no. I accused a lot of women around the world. Oh. Uh, it came of off that. like you were talking to her about no, it. No no no. She she was agreeing with me. She was oh. saying yeah like uh, I kind of want to be you know I got a demon inside me or whatever. But I relax. I chill the fuck out. I see. And don't get me started on cramps. Cramp. You can't spell cramps without cat. That's fucking garbage. Now get out of here. Cramps? Yeah. Okay. Cramps are bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, I know how you no, are. No, I don't know what you're saying. I know how you are. I had a cramp once. M moved on. Yeah. Yeah. I too have had a cramp. What'd it you was do? recorded. What'd you do to get the cramp out? <laughs> fucking man the fuck up. Shake it off. You finally took a shit. <laughs> That's, what <Yeah>. I mean. <laughs> That's what gets rid of cramps. Well, for you, if you're getting a cramp, it's going to be my first recommendation. <laughs> Go take uh, this shit. Cramp in his arm. <laughs> oh, I don't mean a muscular, I mean abdominal cramps. You know what they're talking about abdominal cramps when they say cramps, right? I know they're talking about bullshit is what I know they're talking all about. Right. That's all I know. Cramps are cramps, I'm Back to our empathic failure conversation, sir. Ashley, what's going on? Hey, Dr. Drew. Hey, How Ashley. are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, so my husband um, was diagnosed with reactive arthritis. Mm -hmm. He carries the gene HLA B27. Or I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yep. Yeah. So it was really bad when he first got diagnosed. And we, before that, I was no sugar, no grain. Um, and then we got him to do it to help inflammation mm. and all that. He was mm. really good for a while. Did it help? And he's a he's a Finnish carpenter. However, I want to know if there is if it's I don't I don't want to nag him, but I know when he's drinking his four to five IPAs a night after work, I don't want to nag him and say, hey, that's going to cause more inflammation because he hurts every day and yeah. he's on so much medicine and mm. roll methotrexate. Oh boy! So and, um, so hold can on. I talk so, to so, his doctor. Okay. So hold on. I, I want to get a little more clarity on what's going on with him. You said, you said reactive arthritis, which usually means like relative to a bowel condition or a virus. Do you mean that, or do you mean something like an HLA B twenty seven illness, like Rider syndrome? It's Rider syndrome. It okay. was crazy when it first happened, okay. and apparently it's hard to diagnose. Yes, it uh, is. But that's what the doctor also keeps calling it—a reactive arthritis. Okay, so I don't it, it know. is. It is a reactive arthritis. But but I, but I think of other things when I when you just you throw that category out, and so he's. Is it, does he have something called a crossover syndrome? Is there like, are they keep worrying perhaps that he has rheumatoid arthritis? No, not okay. at all. And okay, the doctor's pretty great. And, okay, you good. know, but I'm wondering, no, I'm wondering because. No, I, 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 I know where you're going. But, I know where you're going. So, so he's on all these, <laughs> all these immunosuppressive and immunomodulatory medications is, and it's still not controlling it. Well, he's very active. He's able to, but like he'll have little flare ups here and there where like the other day he could barely get out of bed. I had to massage mm. his foot wow. to kind of get things going to get him, you know, up and we're very active. Um, but I knew that the no sugar, no grain via Vinny yeah. would help him with his inflammation, yeah. but he's drinking the beer. Yeah. And so I no, know that's no, not no, helping, listen, so I, I want to know. I, Ashley, I know what you're saying. I get it. We're going to get to that. I'm just trying to understand what's really going, what the underlying condition is, because there's qualities that you're describing here that have almost, you know, rheumatoid arthritis like quality. Writers is more back and sort of central joints. You're talking about his feet, and I, and he's on very powerful medication. And those medicines are like atomic weapons compared to the anti-inflammatory effects of carbohydrates, right? And so, yes, you want to optimize what he's doing. And yes, four IPAs is a shit ton of carbohydrate. That's lots of carbohydrate. He's almost, you know, defeating whatever he's done the rest of the day by taking those IPAs. Mm -hmm. But in the face of something this inflammatory, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to make that much difference is what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. But, uh, okay. Okay. And I yeah, wonder if he's, he, he may be thinking. He may like he had the pink eye. Yeah. Okay. That's the writer's thing. So it's the iritis. It's the yeah. eye problem. And uh, that, but it, but there's a there's something called a crossover syndrome or mixed connective tissue disease, where you start to get other flavors in with the with the writers. 
and it has that quality about it. I don't know. Ask ask the doctor about that, and and ask about you know the carbohydrate okay. restriction. I I'm with you on it. I I think it's a great idea, and if he had a milder condition, I think I would make a big issue of it. But in something this inflammatory on that much medication that is so powerful, I'm not sure it's going to make that much more difference. So, but good on you for paying attention. By the way, it wouldn't hurt him to cut out the IPAs. By the way, ooh, let's see what this is. This is Peter. Peter, what's up? Hey, Hitler, how's it going? Hey, man. Uh, oh, can I do a quick shout out to the Booth Boys? Uh, of course. Their, their episode, right? They're what's right up? here. Oh, oh, excellent. All right, well, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Booth Boys, and I uh, just want to say congratulations, Eni, on uh, winning the basketball game. Uh, Appreciate always you, baby. Win it because you know you just build different, man. Hell yeah, I'm holding the trophy right now. Appreciate you. Oop. Yeah, he is. Yeah, right he's always with him. He never lets it go. He drinks out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pee in it, do you? Um, okay, so no, go ahead. What was that? So nothing. Okay, all right. Uh, so I want to talk about. Um, I have a a dark green mass uh, in my skin at the at the base of my penis. Um, yeah, the the thing with it is, uh, it's not a hair follicle. I think because uh, I can work it out with my fingers. Um, there's no liquid in it or or hair, like I said, um, and. It's just it's tiny, tiny, like less than a pimple, um, but it appears every now and then. Uh, it didn't seem really worth going to a doctor for, so um, I, I haven't figured out what it is. Sometimes those are like four dice spot kind of things. They're sort of in that zone. Uh, sometimes they are really just clogged glands. There's like sebaceous cyst or little mini sebaceous cyst. You know how Dr. Pimple Popper is pulling out those big black knots sometimes? It's mm. the same thing. Some t- I, again, I don't, I'm don't. i not looking at this, so it's hard for me to know for sure, but I suspect it's something like that. Uh, except the only the only caveat I would say, uh, and I was watching Eni's face while you described your condition, dark and green is rarely good <laughs> when it comes to the skin or actually anything else. Well, it stressed me out until you said that it was like smaller than a Q-tip. Uh, or whatever, although I watched like, oh, your face. Fine. You were like, you were, yeah. you were getting, you were getting pretty, uh, <laughs> he was getting pretty upset about it. Uh, and then it relaxed instantly when you said, and that, and that you can squeeze it out. Of course, is the is the part that really makes it most consistent with a sebaceous cyst, a sebaceous type cyst. Uh, okay, my goodness, lots of interesting stuff here. I got a question for yeah, you, yeah, buddy, Chief. Okay, uh, so about this whole PMS thing, right? Now, the common <laughs> consensus uh, from uh, angry uh, women that are probably PMSing right now. Um, was that uh, I should take this uh, weird period simulator thing that I guess people do. Have you heard about this? No, like, but it guy... sounds like something I want to have happen right here on this show. So, But I was wondering, right, because obviously I'm down. Like, I'm definitely going to be able to take it. You're fucking, you're, you're freaking out about nothing. But how do you determine, how is that determined? Where it's like, yeah, this is definitely the right amount of pain. You know, like, how do they determine that without asking someone is this right? Like, does this hurt as much as your Well, the, re- the really que- question is, how is it even reasonably possible if you don't already know what the pain is? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, That's what it's, I'm saying. it's not, right? It's, it is this kind of a goof in a certain respect. Yeah. And one of the bigger aspects of PMS is the effects of the hormones on the brain, right? So things that may be tolerable during other times of the month become overwhelming when your brain's you know, under the influence of these hormonal states. And I, and when people talk, you know, I, even Christina, though, said something about wanting to cry and wanting to kill everybody, and that's not normal, right, to, to have mm. those feelings and impulses. That's the part that gets more problematic even than the, the discomfort and the cramps. Mm. Although some women can have terrible dysmenorrhea, to, to be clear. I mean, we, we talked to somebody a little while ago about endometriosis. That can be disabling pain. Uh, that's not just the usual cramps of a menstrual period. That's a serious or a ruptured ovarian cyst, things like that. These are things that need surgery to kind of intervene and, and take care of them because they can be so severe. Yeah, real things. Real, yeah, real got you. Things. Copy that, Chief. I hear you loud and clear, Well, dog. real things, you know, the, the, the pain caused by menstrual irregularities is real, mm-hmm. uh, but it, they're not so substantial that you're going to need a surgery. So. They're not so substantial they're not that you disabling. get over it. That, well, <laughs> look, not every, you know that you're different, that, right? <laughs> you know. I mean, I know that. <laughs> but, but I mean, you're different in the sense of what you can tolerate and push through and will yourself into it. That's not normal. That's a, that's exceptional. Mm. That's exceptional. You you think everyone's capable of that? 
They just aren't. You are. They're, they're more. So you know. They're. They're. I. I like. I like your position that they're more capable than they know or they think they are, which will would help them be more like you. But you're next level stuff. No, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. I I am uh, 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 championing women here. I'm saying you, you are better than this. You know, you don't you don't have to fall for the ruse. But, but you, of PMS. Could, you don't have to. But you can say this about, about how much yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah but you're you stronger but you, than you this. think it's ruse to have a bowel movement, dude. You think that's a ruse? <laughs> it's like you don't need to have a bowel movement. I mean, you don't for a while. That's what I'm saying. You, you think it's a, a ruse. I, I know you. I know what goes on in your head. And and God bless you. I, by the way, I don't know if I brought this up with you. I forget. But I was reading. I, I've been looking for reasons to be worried about you. Oh, <laughs> and, you don't have to look very yeah. far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You still don't have a reason. But, right? but, but about right here, what are you, what are you but, looking but it, for? But, but when it comes to holding the, the stool in all that time, and oh, it can no. predispose to more diverticulosis, diverticular disease, which mm. both your friend and I have you know, suffered with. And so I started thinking, oh, well, there's something that's not good about this. Oh, you know what? Like, everyone and their mom is has diver been... Is diverticulitis his cap? What? <laughs> it's sus. What? No, I would never say something that insane. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's a medical condition. What the fuck? Wow, look, I, we, we, but dude, we don't know where you draw your lines, <laughs> so I'm learning something. <laughs> but, but you were talking to somebody, what happened? Um, no, uh, so huh. everybody and their mom have been sending me this article. Uh, you could probably look it up. It says, uh, look up um, uh, not pooping cognitive function. Oh. There was this article that came out that said uh, holding your poop for more than three days it has been proven to lessen cognitive function or something like that. Scientists Did you find to cognitive data from right, one it bowel movement a day compared brain. to cognitive data from people that are three. Okay, first of all, these are uh, what they should have done was take the person that has stool every day and make them hold it for three days and then see if that person has a change in their cognition. Constipation participants only went every three days, had significantly worse cognition, blah, 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 blah. Look, th that the fact that they're constipated could be something already degenerative going on in their system, right? Part of a, a cognitive decline could be part of that. This is the sus, sus study, right? No, this one's cap. It is not cap, it is sus. Uh, and what, the, what they're going for, though, and this is the sort of legitimate part, is people are always trying to make a connection between the bacterial flora of the gut and cognition and health. And yes, there are things that are tied together there for sure. I don't know that you fucked up your bacterial flora by by not having bowel movements. Maybe you made it better. Maybe maybe that's why you can made it better. Made it better in the yeah. sense that your your cognition is clearer because you've held your stool in long. I don't know because no one studied any. And and we don't even have enough full understanding of this all this whole landscape yet to really even say anything really. I mean, people will argue with me that we can, but uh, not really. I mean, I saw anyway, and it was it was it seemed like an indecisive article to me anyway because it also yeah. said uh, people who were shitting more than once a day also were shown to have like cognitive problems. Yeah. Less yeah. So, so, so again, what so the fuck is the, what, what they should have said: there's something about constipation and there's something about diarrhea sure. that's associated with sure. cognitive, not causes, but is associated with. Hey, Ethan, what's up? Hi, how's it going? Hey, Dr. man, Drew, we're good. Man. What is up? Uh, how's it going, YMH boys? They here, boys. What's up? What's, what's up, up hey. Ethan? Shout out, Any. Hey, yeah, what's up, my boy? That's love right. You, bro. I love In it. that game. I love it. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out to Dobbs Gambling Habit. <laughs> <laughs> shout out right back so to I'm you, my guy. Okay. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the Jewish man with the money. I love it. All right. Uh, but yeah, my question is, uh, <laughs> I uh, I had chlamydia recently. Uh, got diagnosed. Um, big old stinky nuts. No, wait a minute. Wait, uh, wait, 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 like wait, say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Big old stinky nuts? Oh, yeah. I have, I have HPV, too. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And, and where did the, and, who is this and guy? Where did, I love him. And where did the stinky come from? Uh, uh, dumb, dumb trash left from Kingsburg. What do what you say? Like, you what? know, high school relationships. You know how that is. You, you're, but they're... they're I, I don't know of any um, site as any sexually transmitted diseases that cause stinky nuts. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just my, my nuts look gross, and uh, I, I just assume they're stinky, you know? 
Okay. And what are you seeing on them? Uh, what, yeah. what, what's, what, are you, what are you seeing on them? What am I seeing on them? Why do they look gross? What, what are you seeing? Oh, well, uh, I've had HPV since high school, and I recently got diagnosed with it. So, uh, and I have, like, really bad polyps. Ah, okay. The polyps might look funny. Got it. Look up testicle polyps. They are they are pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, they they look kind of nasty. Yeah, look them up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's happening? Fucking take it easy, Ethan. <laughs> then they're by the way they are my not bad, STDs. This is not ST. <laughs> these are not STDs. These are scrotal masses. Uh, get a real picture in there. All yeah, right, I'm yeah. Switching Over there on the right, that's sort of what he's oh talking God, about. No, we're off. We're okay, I'm just telling you, that's what he's talking about. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, good times. So what's what about the chlamydia, Ethan? Uh, so I I got that recently mm. from a girl who does OnlyFans, and uh, she Let's she go. we we got it, and I got it kind of taken care of. But yep. then we, uh, as I was taking the medication, I was still being a little dirty boy, mm. and I still like you know put it in a couple times. Mm. Yeah, so like I don't know if that medication worked. Uh, I had to go get my. <laughs> I had to get my blood taken, and uh, I just said, like, no to that. <laughs> okay. So I think I need to go get that done, and then I was just, I don't know. All right, here's the deal. What, had she been treated before you went back? So she didn't tell me she had it, and I, then she just, like, stopped talking to me. All right, so no. The answer is no. So uh, get, just get yes. re, just get retreated. Just take another, another, just take another Zithromax course. It's just a single dose. Just take it. Ask the doctor. Say I was re-exposed. Okay. And because whether you, okay, it's sort of a, a moot issue. You would just kind of repeat the repeat the course just to make sure you're covered. That's all. It's so simple to treat. It, there now has been simple. It's so common these days in gonorrhea too that we're getting some resistance patterns going there. So be careful, people. It's not just oh, hey, I'll just take antibiotic, no big deal. It starts to become an issue the, the more we uh, allow these things to run amok. They get resistant to the antibiotics. Alec, what's up? Hey, hey man. Uh, so, um, I have a cirrhosis of the liver, oh. and I uh, just wanted to ask a couple questions. So, I am 27. I was diagnosed with a cirrhosis of the liver at 25, mm -hmm. and just kind of uh, wanting to know how much longer I have to put up with this goddamn bullshit. So, <laughs> what, how did you did you get it from? But, um, did you get it from hepatitis, from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, yeah. from from hepatitis? Yeah, this is a um, alcoholic he hepatitis. Alcoholic it was hepatitis. Drinking during the COVID years. Are you still uh, drinking? I was drinking like. Are you still drinking? I'm sorry. Are you still drinking? No, I'm. I've been clean for two years. Okay, good. Are you in the program? Uh, no, I. I was never in the program. It was just kind of, um, I didn't, I was kind of using alcohol as the covering depression. And so whenever I got initially diagnosed whenever? with liver cirrhosis, I, yeah. Not the time, Drew. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. When you got diagnosed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, I was diagnosed and then uh, I, that's whenever I, Got on uh, antidepressants and started seeing counselors. Got it. That. Um, yeah. And so you are, uh, uh, are you okay? Are you using any other substances? No. Okay. No, just weed. At All right. Point. Well, just weed. So that would be the other substance. So now you're still using the weed. So you make sure you talk to your counselor about the fact that you've switched over to weed because that will have consequences also, and it makes the antidepressants essentially – it makes it difficult for the antidepressants to work. So uh, cirrhosis, I, I'm sure they've told you, is inexorable it's, and it's progressive. Uh, but it doesn't have to be rapidly progressive and people can live long periods of time with it, long periods of time. Have they advised you to do anything as a result of it, take any medication or talk to any transplant Yeah, special? I was pretty fairly de um, decompensated. Mm. I was... Um, I a, grew up in the Midwest, so I was out at uh, SL uh, St. Louis University yeah. um, for a transplant evaluation. Okay, but that kind of I was in the meld of around twenty eight, twenty nine oh. at that time. Okay, and um, I was also went through. I got septic twice, and so I've been on SB 
SPC right. or SBP. Right. So you have what's called spon spontaneous, spontaneous yeah. bacterial peritonitis, yeah. SBP, which is common. Do you still have ascites? Do you still have the – look up ascites, guys. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. A-S-C-I-T-E-S. -E okay. Yeah. And are you on – do you take lactulose so you can keep your thinking clear? Yeah, so I'm on Zyfaxin, mm -hmm. I'm on diuretic, okay. Um, okay. lactulose, okay. all that. All right, so um, all that stuff, all the usual stuff. I'm on TRT as well. And, okay. Yeah. So you went to see the transplant people, and did they get you on the list? Yeah, they ended up getting me on the list, and mm -hmm. then it was somewhere in um, December of 21 into – January of 22 that my numbers started to kind of like after the six months of being clean, you, you would expect the hepatitis to go down yeah. and it didn't at that time at nine months. Um, my numbers were still in the 2029 20, as I was saying, but then into that January, December, January, February, they started creeping down and now I'm, here in 23 and so you know, when you and the I numbers you're there, talking about are you talking the about the melds are going down to like 11 right and we are you talking about the 23 you're talking about the pro time so the liver synthetic function right um i'm just talking about the meld score okay meld score okay great okay the calculated yeah. yes okay got it uh so so good you're getting excellent care are, are they still watching you from the transplant standpoint um, no longer from transplant, but kind of watching on the the fatty liver development and things oh, did like the, that. Oh, so you don't do you not have cirrhosis? I I don't I have cirrhosis, but like they're looking at um, can like I don't have fatty liver cirrhosis, but like can that also kind of lead into that or complications down the line? Yes. Uh, it, it, look, it, it's, this is kind of, unpre I, I don't think you can make clear predictions with where you're at, provided you don't expose yourself to alcohol. That includes like in mouthwash and everything, no alcohol. And you, yeah. as I said at the outset, you, you know, you asked, you asked, when's all the bullshit going to stop? Well, you're going to be on some bullshit indefinitely, you know, some medication, some diuretic, some something. Um, for sure. Uh, yeah, I was kind of just uh, being funny, but you know, like I was more or less saying, does does this usually, in, in as you've seen, I know it's very, very it's hard to predict based on multiple factors. Yes, yeah. hard to predict. Um, do you see any common with people that do well and stay out of yes. alcohol and other things like that? Do you yes. see them down the line, thirty, forty years still? Uh. S you know, you it's it really to to be able to give you a 30 40 year sort of window, I'd have to like look at the biopsies and look at what your liver actually looks like. Yeah. If if you had really mild cirrhosis, yeah, yeah. Uh and and no other confounding features. I mean, it's hard to predict. But god, you know, in these days with the transplant advances, it, you're going to you are going to live a long time. But just you got to yeah. you got to stay. You, you're gonna have to go through a lot of hoops, and you're gonna have to stay under careful supervision. But back in the day, trust me, it was way worse, and you can be very confident in in living a long time. Okay. All right. Yeah. All thank right. you. All right, man. But you're gonna have to really. It's gonna be work, man. It's not gonna be nothing. It's gonna be. It's gonna be, you know, maybe a transplant, and that's a lot of work too. Uh, Brandon, what's going on there? Hey, Hitler. It's an honor talking to you. Hey, man. What's up? Um, so, after being a fan of YMH for a while and being exposed to cool guys, mm -hmm. and slowly realizing that my dad is becoming a cool guy, and it's pretty fucking scary. Oh, boy. Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. What is happening exactly? So... A basic thing is like a Facebook picture is that really low, like shitty angle. And then I just recently went back to uh, Hawaii to visit them and he has the TV blasting up loud and he's on TikTok at the same time and he is checked out, just gone, no response, no nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure my whole life of his uh, alcoholism hasn't really helped. Oh. 
Um, okay. So is he still drinking? Yeah. Uh, yes. Natty Ice. Yeah. So, yeah, this is progression of alcoholism. Dementia, alcohol dementia is very common. Alcohol brain damage of various types. And when they're using, in addition to having that neurological degeneration, it, it goes bad. I mean, it, 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 you know, it can get really bad. I mean, you it may at some point have to jump in with a conservatorship or something. Yeah. So there's nothing, there's no, no breakthroughs or anything. Well, yeah, you can get him to stop. You, 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 no, well, they, not when he's drinking. You can get him to stop drinking. Now, you can go uh, do an intervention because uh, you, you don't know. Brandy, you uh, don't. I know. But listen, you don't know what you're going to get when he stops. I mean, sometimes I've seen people get a lot right. better, like almost back to normal when we thought they were just completely gone. And just stopping the alcohol, sometimes this whole thing is something called wet brain. It's the actual effect of it. It's not the mm. alcohol damage. It's the continued intoxication of the alcohol. And wet brain can go back to something like normal. If there's alcohol brain damage or Korsakoff syndrome or you know thiamine deficiency, there's all kinds of crazy shit that can happen. Or liver disease like poor uh, Brandon, I think, uh, Alec, we were just talking to. Um, you know, These all have neurological syndromes associated with them. So we don't really know what's going on here until he gets proper assessment and stops drinking and stops drinking. All right. And you can do intervention. You can bring the recovering community in there. If he has any recovering friends, get him in there. And he's probably going to have to go to the hospital to detox. That's the other thing is when he's drinking to that. And certainly he needs to go to at least an ER to get an evaluation of his brain. Like what's going on? I, for all we know, he fell down, hit his head and has an intracranial subdural hematomas or something. It could be a million things. He needs careful medical evaluation. He needs to stop drinking. You guys didn't like it when I pointed out the whenever? No, I, I loved him. <laughs> he was oh, asking how long he had to live, and you're like, you said that wrong, dude. You're like, you dumb piece of shit. Yeah, you're yeah, being I think you're gonna be okay. pretty insensitive. <laughs> just pointing it out. Just wasn't pointing that out for him. That doesn't justify it. <laughs> that doesn't look, justify I, it. He was not being insensitive. It was just sort of, you're like, well, look. you're going to die whenever you die. <laughs> <laughs> no, look. One he of the was like things, calling in with a serious medical. It concern. was a serious like, thing, but but he, he look, it's a, he needed to feel less heavy about the whole thing. He's dealing with a lot of shit there, and so part of the reason I was being light about it is to lighten the mood for him because he was he was he's carrying a big load, and uh, he's worried obviously that it you know it, it, it's a lot. It, liver transplants a lot to deal with. Yeah, whenever you deal with it, yeah. When you deal with it, it's going to be a lot. All right. Well, listen, thank you guys for calling. Uh, hang in there if you're on hold. Uh, we, again, are always at 818-253-1693 for your voicemails and Dr. Do After Dark for the Gmails, uh, at gmail.com for the emails. We appreciate it very much. Booth Boys, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank uh, you. More oh, with yeah. you guys ahead. I, I love spending a little time with you, and so we will do so. People, have been, The fans have been asking for it. The mommies uh, have been asking for more Booth Boys, and I'm delighted to spend time with you guys. So we will see you all next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.